The U.S. Army recently unveiled not only the next generation of U.S. Army light tanks, the M-10 Booker, but it also advanced the M-2 Bradley's successor, the XM-30, to the final stage of the two-pronged bidding process. We're going to take a closer look at these two new additions to the U.S. Army today. Before we officially get started, I'm going to take a minute to give you a rundown of the U.S. Army's next-generation combat vehicle program. The main focus of the program is to replace the M1 Abrams and M2 Bradley, the Stryker Armored Vehicle, and the M113 Armored Personnel Carrier, which have been in service for 40 years. The U.S. Army unveiled the NGCV program in 2017 with the intention of replacing the active armored troops with newly designed armored fighting vehicles. In total, the NGCV program can be divided into six major projects, namely the Armored Multipurpose Vehicle Program that is to replace the M113, the optionally manned fighting vehicle to replace the M2. The Mobile Protected Firepower Program was designed to support the infantry. The Decisive Lethality Platform Program, which replaced the M1A2, and the Robotic Combat Vehicle Program. The M10 Booker and XM30 Mechanized Infantry Combat Vehicle, on the other hand, are products of the MPF and OMFV programs, respectively. In the bidding for the MPF program, although several ground equipment defense vendors submitted their proposals, only General Dynamics' proposal was selected due to Singapore's proposal being the first to go and BAE's lightweight M8 missing its delivery deadline. General Dynamics eventually officially won the MPF program on June 28, 2022, and was awarded a contract worth up to $1.14 billion. As planned, the first 96 M10 bookers will be delivered in Q4 2025. The General Dynamics program was based on the development of the Griffin the First Light Tank and the Ascot MMBT Medium Tank, which led to the development of the Griffin the Second Light Tank. The current version is the renamed M10 Booker Light Tank. The advantage of this design is that the technology platform is mature and the development risk is low. Moreover, the Ascod was originally a representative of a new generation of heavy infantry vehicles that emphasized protection, and although it was no longer capable of airborne combat, the problem of insufficient protection of the M551 and M8 was ameliorated. However, due to the IFV conversion to the light tank program, the M10 Booker has a high center of gravity, excessive weight, and other shortcomings. The M10 Booker is somewhat of a compact version of the M1 main battle tank. It uses a chassis developed by General Dynamics for the Ajax series of light armored vehicles. It is equipped with a 105mm XM35 gun, a 7.62mm machine gun, and a 12.7mm machine gun. It provides enhanced fire support for light infantry and airborne units and can fill the combat gap between the Abrams and the M1126 Stryker in the U.S. Army's Armored Vehicle Series. The M10 Booker is lighter and easier to transport than the Abrams, weighing only 38 tons. A C-17 can transport two M10 Bookers at the same time, which is in line with the U.S. Army's strategic goal of rapid deployment over long distances. It will be issued to infantry units like the M-10 tank destroyer in World War II for direct fire support, artillery suppression, and anti-light armor missions, with a focus on infantry protection rather than anti-armor. In terms of reducing technical requirements and controlling costs, the M-10 is superior to all light tanks in service worldwide, costing $12.9 million each. Possibly due to budgetary constraints, the U.S. Army did not equip them in large numbers. Although 96 units were planned in the original contract, the actual order is now for only 26 units, not even enough for a tank battalion. The first one is expected to be delivered in November of this year. Hopefully, we'll see the first full M10 Booker battalion in late 2024 or early 2025. The XM30 combat vehicle, which is still in the final selection phase and is expected to replace the M2, is the focus of this video, as opposed to the M10, which has been finalized and is just waiting for production rollout. The OMFV program was originally a five-company bidding process involving BAE, General Dynamics, American Rainmetal Defense, Oshkosh, and Point Blank Enterprises. However, after intense competition, only two teams, General Dynamics and American Rainmetal Defense, made it to the final selection stage. 
The OMFV project name was also renamed the XM-30 Mechanized Infantry Combat Vehicle by the U.S. Army. The two teams will initially split the $1.6 billion in development funding equally, and after each has built 11 prototypes, they will be evaluated by the U.S. Army. Testing of both vehicles is expected to begin in the first quarter of 2025, with the final bid announced in 2027. The eventual winner will win a $45 billion production deal. Although the prototype of the XM-30 is not yet complete, U.S. Army officials say the new combat vehicle will be hybrid-powered, carry a 50mm machine gun turret and anti-armor weaponry, and be able to carry up to six soldiers at a time. What's more, some of the XM-30's equipment functions will be automated, effectively reducing the work of the vehicle's crew members in combat. XM-30 is expected to enter service in 2029, and both companies' programs are very good. Which company's probability of winning the bid will be greater? First of all, the proposals given by these two companies are optimized and improved based on the existing IFV. However, in order to differentiate from the existing IFV, the U.S. Army has set several key figures for the final product of the XM-30. For example, the driver's crew was to be two, capable of carrying six infantrymen, and the main weapon was to be the XM-193 50mm gun with the addition of anti-tank missiles. The powertrain will be a hybrid, reducing noise and heat signals. If things go well, the U.S. Army hopes to have low-speed production in 2027 and full-speed production by 2029. Knowing these stipulations, let's take a look at who has the best odds of winning the bid. General Dynamics proposal is the Griffin III armored vehicle. I have to say, General Dynamics is really ambitious. The Griffin II light tank has already won the MPF program, and now the Griffin III infantry fighting vehicle, which was developed at the same time, has entered the final stage of the OMFV program. If the U.S. Army intends to merge the light tank and infantry fighting vehicle programs in the future, then the possibility of General Dynamics eventually winning the bid will be very high. Because the finalized M10 light tank has the function, in fact, and the U.S. Army plans to OMFV project in the use and function of a certain overlap. The M10 and Griffin III share the same chassis and technology, which is the common chassis of the Ascot infantry fighting vehicle. The Ascot Infantry Fighting Vehicle was developed by Sterdaimler Puck, Austria, and Santa Barbara Sistemas, Spain, in the 1990s. As soon as General Dynamics acquired Santa Barbara Sistemas, it realized the great potential of the Ascot chassis, which can be fitted with a very wide range of weapon systems. For example, a 105mm gun system and at least two 105mm turret systems. In addition, General Dynamics developed an extended chassis Ascot model in conjunction with Krauss Maffei Wegman, using it as a chassis for the Donner 155mm self propelled howitzer. And the British Ajax Infantry Fighting Vehicle uses a new generation Ascot PT 5 chassis developed by General Dynamics. The armor of this chassis has a high level of protection, in the case of not adding any add on armor. The front can defend 500 meters away from the Russian 14.5 mm caliber heavy machine gun fire. The side and rear armor can withstand NATO 7.62 mm rifle rounds. As for what General Dynamics Ground Systems XM-30 infantry fighting vehicle will look like, it should be a heavy combat vehicle based on the Ascod 2 infantry fighting vehicle with a US version of the armor, engine, and weapon system. The main weapon should be a 50mm gun and an iron fist active protection system. The crew was composed of three, one driver, one gunner, and one commander, and it could also carry eight infantrymen. American Rainmetal Defense's XM-30, on the other hand, is optimized based on the Lynx KF-41 with unique functional advantages. We know that the Lynx series of infantry vehicles is a new product of Rainmetal in recent years, including two basic models, the KF-31 and KF-41. The KF-41 is considered to be the most balanced infantry vehicle in terms of performance. The KF-41 is heavier than the KF-31, with a combat weight of 44 tons, about the same as some main battle tanks. Its weight can continue to increase to 50 tons, much of which is used for armor. And for such a heavy vehicle, the powertrain is quite powerful. Rainmetal equipped it with a Liebherr turbocharged diesel engine with 1,140 horsepower. 
With an automatic transmission, the vehicle can reach a maximum speed of 70 km per hour. The KF-41's turret is fitted with a bidirectional 35mm gun and a 7.62mm machine gun. The gun can fire armor-piercing and high-explosive munitions. The KF-41 is a larger vehicle than the KF-31, with more room for eight heavily armed soldiers. Modern warfare places great importance on the stealth of weapons, and the designers of the KF-41 took this into account. The KF-41's hull is coated with anti-infrared paint, and the gun barrels are fitted with cooling and insulating shrouds. The KF-41 has a versatile hull with superior load-carrying capacity, around which the required modular weapon suite, defense suite, and other equipment can be designed to enable rapid conversion of mission functions. Rainmetal's XM-30 infantry vehicle is optimized based on the KF-41. And in what ways will it be optimized? The first optimization is definitely the gun caliber. KF-41 infantry fighting vehicle did not use the popular past European and American infantry fighting vehicle 30mm gun, but the use of a 35mm gun, but from the US Army regulations XM-193 50mm gun, there is still a gap. And the caliber of the future artillery will inevitably develop towards diversification. In addition to being able to adapt to different caliber ammunition, the export of ammunition will also have a certain advantage, such as the D-Series modular turret, which can be freely selected from 30 to 120 mm different caliber main guns. The second direction of optimization is towards the development of weapon digitalization. KF-41's active defense system and situational awareness information display system, although the body has a certain digital function, are not enough in today's high-intensity information technology and network battlefield background. Only the depth of integration into the integrated combat system can significantly enhance the relevant situational awareness and precision strike capabilities. In addition, the protection performance of infantry fighting vehicles is also the focus of the upgrade. After all, on the battlefield, infantry fighting vehicles are to accompany the main battle tank charge. In modern warfare, with the increasing power of anti-armor weapons, infantry fighting vehicles are facing more and more threats. How to improve the protection ability of infantry fighting vehicles and protect the safety of vehicle-mounted infantrymen is the key direction of current research in various countries. Rainmetal's XM-30 is naturally no exception and will inevitably undergo multiple protections. The direction of optimization should be to continue to expand the modular function of KF-41. And the high degree of versatility of parts and modular components not only effectively reduces logistical support costs but also helps to replace damaged modules in a timely manner on the battlefield and quickly restore the combat effectiveness of the infantry fighting vehicle. This is one of the key advantages of Rainmetal's XM-30. In short, General Dynamics XM-30 is relatively less difficult to develop, and the tie-in is an advantage established by the MPF program which may be able to take all the orders for the U.S. Army's next-generation light tanks and infantry fighting vehicles. The XM-30 program developed by Rainmetal has a relatively clear direction for optimization and has the unique advantages of digitalization and modularization, which will be even greater if it is considered in the long run. In addition to these two programs, the NGCV program also includes the armored multipurpose vehicle and the robotic combat vehicle. The goal is to introduce drones, AI, and other technologies into Army equipment, thereby reducing the risk of battle damage and expanding the Army strike range. Whoever wins the bid from these two companies will depend on how well modularization and other related technologies are developed before the results are announced in the US in 2027. But no matter who wins the bid, replacing the M2 infantry fighting vehicle, which has been in service for 40 years, is urgent. Even after several performance upgrades, it is difficult to cope with future battlefield needs.